Here rests in honored glory an American soldier, known but to God. These words grace the tomb of the unknown soldier at Arlington National Cemetery. Every hour of every day, soldiers from the Army's 3rd Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard, stand watch over three unidentified soldiers' final resting places. Their task is performed immaculately, every action steeped in meaning. If America has any hallowed ground, this is it. Here rests in honored glory an American soldier, known but to God. These words also grace another tomb, almost 2,000 miles to the west, in southeast Montana. No tomb guard stands watch over his grave, no crowd recognizes his sacrifice. Yet this soldier also fought and died for his country, same as his more well-known unknown brothers. He was killed during the Battle of the Little Bighorn on June 25, 1876. During the opening phase of that battle, Major Marcus Reno led a cavalry charge on an Indian village nestled against the Little Bighorn River. The troopers dismounted and fired into the village as hundreds of Indian warriors swarmed out to meet them. Within minutes, the troopers were quickly outnumbered by as many as 10 to 1 and pulled back to an area of trees by the river. It was here, in this timber, that the tactical situation rapidly deteriorated even further. Surrounded by Indians, with his men isolated, Major Reno led a panicked retreat out of the timber and across the river. Some soldiers did not hear the order. Others were unable to get to their horses in time. Reno's route was marked by a ragged line of dead and dying horses and men. The Indians would later call it a buffalo chase. Private William Morris, who survived the valley fight and retreat, recounted, Lorenz was the man shot through the stomach in the timber and who was left there when Reno retreated out. Lorenz was in great distress and refused to be assisted. David Summers was killed just as he emerged from the timber. About halfway to the river, Scollin's horse was shot and he went down, and Scollin took his carbine and said, For God's sake, boys, don't leave me here. Of the roughly 120 men Reno commanded into battle, more than 30 would die here. The valley fight is figuratively and literally overshadowed by the hills across the river, where Lieutenant Colonel George Custer and every one of the 210 men under his immediate command would be killed in action a couple of hours later. After the battle, soldiers would do their best to bury their dead, but there was a lack of tools and the wounded men desperately needed to get to a hospital. Most of the dead received only a cursory burial, and those who were difficult to find simply went unburied. In May 1926, a work crew digging a culvert for the nearby highway discovered a nearly complete skeleton missing its skull. The body had two bullets in the hip and shoulder, and government issue buttons found on the bones left no doubt it was an American soldier. Fortunately, the trooper was found a month prior to a huge commemoration of the battle's 50th anniversary. As part of the events, the remains were buried on land donated by a local storekeeper, a few hundred feet from where he was found. The unknown trooper was buried with military honors on June 26, 1926, 50 years and one day after his death. As a sign of reconciliation, White Bull and Edward Godfrey, who had fought at the spot half a century earlier, shook hands and literally buried a hatchet along with the trooper. There used to be a museum next to the grave, but let's just say it has seen better days. Today, the tomb stays mostly quiet under the Montana sky, disturbed only occasionally by the sound of local residents getting their mail. This man had the hard luck to be killed in action during a conflict that most Americans today regard with ambivalence and regret, if they think about it at all. Yet this soldier died for his country, the same as his brothers in arms laid to rest at Arlington. Here rests in honored glory an American soldier known but to God.